So the last Dunum Diary was in July and it looked super fun. Personally, I was bummed to find out that I couldn't participate. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. After a few days of moping, I decided enough is enough and I would simply take some time to make a game of my own. For a long time, I've been wanting to do something using controller input and we'd recently been playing a lot of Super Smash Bros for the Nintendo 64. Inspired by this idea of multi-character combat, I started to sketch out a level. I thought I should stay in the Ludum Diary mindset, so I tried to keep everything as simple as possible. I took the Battlefield stage from the Wii U game and recreated it using basic shapes. It wasn't pretty, but I really wanted to move on to something more important, movement. And this is by far the mechanic that I spend the most time on. I had a few requirements. I wanted the movement to be smooth, but responsive. I wanted a lot of movement on both the horizontal and the vertical axis. And finally, I needed the character movement to blend nicely with combat. Now if you ever tried creating physics based movement in Unity, you know that controlling a character using forces can quickly make it feel sloppy and unresponsive. But I needed to use physics because I wanted the combat between players to be physics based. The way I ended up solving this problem was by adjusting the amount of force applied to a player depending on the current velocity of the player in the given direction. This means that if you press right and the character is already moving quickly in that direction, it's not going to apply that much force. However, if you then push left, it's going to apply a great amount of force trying to shift the character in the new direction. This approach was great because it gave me full control over the snappiness of the controls and I think they ended up feeling pretty good. To give the players the feeling that they could move both horizontally and vertically, I added triple jump along with the ability to control the characters while in mid-air. This is also the first time that I changed the level to fit better with the controls. When the players are able to move this freely, the level needs to give them space to do so. So I made the platform smaller and increased the distance between them. Next, I wanted movement to blend with combat. I was really inspired by the way that Super Smash Bros handles damage. Basically, the more you get hit, the easier you are to knock off the level. I really wanted to emphasize this mechanic, but with more focus on ranged shooting. So I equipped all the characters with weapons that shot out spheres. When a player got hit by a sphere, it would add a force depending on their current weakness level. The weakness level would of course also increase over time as they got hit. The only way to die in the game was to get shot off the platform. I think this works really well because it feels like you're always in control. If you get shot really hard, you squeeze the joystick and do everything you can to time your jumps in an effort to make it back. I also added visual feedback on the current weakness level of the characters by scaling them up as they got weaker. At this point the game was playable and I started testing it with my friends. I quickly found out however that a lot of stuff still needed to be changed. Of course I needed to tweak some values like movement speed and damage but the main problem was the layout of the level. While the level worked great in Super Smash Bros, it played really poorly in my game. I found that the big issue was the use of floating platforms. My game was centered around shooting and the platforms would often get in the way. This led to moments of unfairness where players would randomly get saved by the environment without even trying to. It also made it too hard to hit each other because you could simply hide on the other side of a platform. So to fix this, I completely removed all platforms and flattened out the level. I also made it wider and added lots of holes that players could fall into. At this point, I started picturing the level with some actual art assets in it. I decided to use the Mayan Temple Pack from Dev Assets to make kind of an ancient underground arena. In the middle of the arena, I made a big pool of lava where the players can fight to push each other in. I like this idea in particular because, well, I really wanted to make lava. I ended up using a free lava flowing shader from the asset store as a base. I then added some particles and a bunch of post-processing effects to help tie everything together. When I was happy with the look of the game, I once again asked my friends for feedback. This time we played the game for a while and had a whole bunch of fun, but the combat still needed more depth. So inspired by Samus' ability to charge her attacks, I added charge up to the spheres. Charging up an attack increased both the size, damage and speed of the projectiles and helped make combat much more interesting. Now each player had to decide in a given situation whether to fire quick short bursts or to charge up hoping for that one big hit. I also added strategies for avoiding and blocking attacks. I made it so if you hit other players bullets they get destroyed and I also added knockback to the weapon so you could use a powerful attack as a way to stop yourself from falling in the lava. At this point I was happy with how combat felt and I worked on polishing the game a bit. I added a camera that would dynamically follow around and zoom in and out to fit all the players and I also added some effects for extra flair using the unity particle pack. And that's pretty much where the game is in its current state. I've experimented with adding power-ups, but I still need to add many more to make that system viable. I of course still have a bunch of stuff that I'd like to do, like add more detail to the level and add moving elements to make it more dynamic. But overall, I'm happy with what I did. Unfortunately, it took away the pain of not participating in Ludum Diary. At least some of it. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, maybe check out some of my other behind-the-scenes work. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.
thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in October, and a special thanks to Dudeman, Armin, Hans Haftun, Cole Cabral, Superman the Great, James P, Thomas Volley, Cyborg Mummy, Jason the Tito, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Manolis, Nick Lang, Aaron, Robert Bund, and Peter Locke. You guys rock.